We are less than two weeks away from the start of the NBA Finals. And right now the Boston Celtics are back on the biggest stage for the second time in three seasons. Now, unlike 2022, this Celtics team, them making the Finals wasn't a lot of fanfare, a lot of celebration, because honestly, they were expected to do this and more. So where does that put us? The Boston Celtics, they won 64 games, entered the playoffs, went 12 and two versus the East, who is really, really depleted. There's not many narratives you can build or create off a team that's been this dominant for the entire season. So what happens with ESPN nowadays? They just start making up stuff. Tatum somehow doesn't like Brown, he's jealous. They pin these two superstars against each other. A lot of chatter online yesterday, to whatever degree this is important and relevant, about Jason Tatum's reaction. When Jalen Brown wins that award in the moment that it happens, uh, the, the, the rest of the team just goes crazy. And you were, you were talking about it in our meeting earlier this morning. They all were so genuinely, look at them, they're all so genuinely excited for him. And you did, what you did not seem to think that it was mirrored in Jason Tatum. I get it, ESPN's the bottom of the barrel for sports coverage, but this right here is like middle school girl level stuff. This right here isn't even basketball, isn't even sports analysis, it's just a glorified TMZ. And the funny thing is, Tatum, they highlight his face, and he's clearly happy for Jalen and celebrating him when the East MVP. So you're not gonna gaslight me in real time when Tatum is clearly happy for him and say he's not and he's jealous of Brown. And here's the worst thing of all. Jalen and Jason collectively combined for 60 points per game in this year's conference finals. One of only a handful of duos to ever do this in league history. If this was any other tandem 10 years ago, five years ago, heck, even 30 years ago, we wouldn't be talking about if they can play together, they can complement each other. We'd be boosting them up and praising them for their great play on both ends of the court. But for some odd reason with Taven Brown, we got to gaslight the audience that these guys don't like each other and are somehow jealous of each other's success. And if you've followed Boston for a long time in the Jason Jalen era, really the media since 2020 have been trying to break these two guys up at every single turn. I mean, back in 2021, when Boston was a 500 team, the roster was in shambles. People were demanding this duo get broken up on the spot. And even last year after Game 7 versus the Heat, when they lost at home, People were saying split this duo up, they won't work, and they won't be successful going forward. Slick, here's my first thought. Mm. Thought about this this morning for a long time. You have to break up the duo of Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown. So you think it's time to blow up the Jays. Why? It is because they, look, it's not a lot of high-fiving. It's not a lot of chest bumping. When one is having success, the other one is not. And that's how it is. So. As bad as we all would like to see it work, they can't coexist. To me, that's ultimately what the Boston Celtics are missing. They have tremendous talent, and you have these two all-NBA players. One of them has to go. The fundamental idea of breaking up two players who haven't even hit 30 yet or multiple-time All-Stars, that in itself is an idiotic premise. And look, you guys know this, the NBA, it's a talent league and a superstar driven league. And whether you think Tatum's a top 10 player, top five player, or Jalen a top 20 or 25 player, these two guys undoubtedly are very talented players. Guys like Tatum and Jalen, they don't grow on trees. And the fact that they were both Celtics draft picks, they are born and bred in Boston. Breaking these two guys up should never be on the table. And luckily for Celtics fans, Brad Stevens did the exact opposite after last year's Game 7, as he flipped Marcus Smart, Rob Williams, and Grant Williams for Drew Holiday and Kristaps Porzingis. If Boston wins the championship this season, which I think they will do, the Drew Holiday trade, Porzingis trade, it'll go down in Celtics lore as two of the biggest robberies in franchise history. Now, looking back at the current Celtics team, one of the biggest narratives about them is they aren't clutch and good in late game situations. And look, to be fair to some people, Celtics teams in the past, very ISO heavy late in games, got terrible shots, and there wasn't a ton of ball movement. But that was Boston in the past. The 2022 Celtics, even last year in 2023. Late in games, they weren't great. 
But seeing someone like Charles Barkley after Game 3 of the East Finals say Boston still was bad in late game situations, I just, I don't buy that. They are the worst offense I've seen for grown folks. This is the, like, <laughs> for grown folks. <laughs> like, it's like, they had, it's like they just get a ball to one guy and go one-on-one. -on -one. They win a lot of games because they got talent. But there's, it's like, I'm like, what are they doing? It's like, here, Jason, you get to the top of the key, go one on one, shoot a step back three. Jalen, you go back there, you make a move. Everybody just stands around. It's frustrating. Boston concerns me because it's too much one on one, UD. Mm -hmm. It's not JB and JT feeding off of each other. It's your turn, my turn, your turn, my turn, okay? And look, I don't want to toot my own horn, but for the Boston Celtics, I've watched about every game for the past five seasons. This year's Celtics team is drastically better than last year's team and infinitely better than the 2022 team. And when it comes to late game play closing moments, this Celtics team has infinitely more options. As of course, Derek White can hit big shots. And then Drew Holiday is a veteran NBA champion who comes up big on defense and offense. And they add Porzingis for the finals, just another added weapon to the arsenal for Boston late in games. And looking at the actual numbers, the facts, and the data, the 23 Celtics in clutch games in the playoffs compared to this year's team, it's night and day. Boston in 23, ranked 9th in scoring, 10th in shooting percentage, 6th in assist, 9th in plus minus, and 8th in defensive rating. This year's team, 1st in points per game, 4th in true shooting percentage, 1st in assist, first and plus minus, and second in offensive rating. Like I said seconds ago, this year's Celtics team in the clutch isn't comparable to last year's team. And one thing fans might say is that, well, this team's competition, it was weak, and really they weren't tested. Which I guess is a fair statement, is a true statement, but at the same time, you gotta play who's in front of you. And looking at Boston and the East Finals specifically, when they were tested, they responded every single time. Look at game one, for example. Jalen Brown, the clutch shot in the corner. Tatum, also game one, had 10 points in overtime, including a clutch three-pointer. Game three in Indy, the pace of the fourth quarter shot 38%. Jason Tatum, a big-time clutch three, and a pass to Horford in the corner for another three-pointer. And of course, Drew Holiday, the and one layup, and the steal on Nemhart. And staying on game three for one second, Barkley after this game like you saw, said Boston's fourth quarter offense was too ISO heavy, too much dribbling, and guys standing around and watching. And I watched this game in real time, and I rewatched it after these comments. And I just, I don't see that looking at the game film and the actual product in front of me. Mar doing everything to keep the Pacers from falling down 0-3. Brown throws to the Horford. Derek White back to Horford, the pile on him. Horford trying to take advantage. And he I think what Barkley is stuck on is the Celtics teams in years past. Because this team late in games, they move the ball and isn't stagnant or ISO heavy. And that right there is what makes Boston so special. In numerous games, different players stepped up, made crucial plays on both ends. Game 1, it was Jalen in the 4th quarter, Tatum in overtime. Game 3, a combination of Jalen, Tatum, and especially Drew Holiday. And then in Game 4, really a whole team effort with Derek White hitting the dagger. If you put the 22 Celtics, the 23 Celtics, in all three of those ball games, I'd say for sure they drop one game and probably two. But this year's team, something's different about them. They're resilient. They have that attitude, the calluses of past playoff failures. And one last thing I do want to touch on, this Celtics team being so dominant all season long, their losses, their wins, they get nitpicked and scrutinized more than any squad in the NBA, and really in recent history. And the games they lost in this year's postseason, what's the two common themes? Miami in Game 2 versus Boston in the second half, they made 10 three-pointers. Cleveland in Game 2, the exact same thing, 10 threes in the second half. And looking at both Drew Holiday and Derek White, awful shooting games in both those matchups, as Drew was 6-19 and Derek was 7-19. The only way Boston blows this championship is if teams get hot from three and guys like Derek, Drew, and possibly Porzingis don't show up. And if you want to talk the most probable outcomes of the NBA Finals, look, 
Dallas is talented, Minnesota is talented. But Boston's team on offense and defense, the most versatile team I've seen in recent years. As Derek, Drew, Tatum, Porzingis, Brown can all go for 20 points or more on any given night. And really all their players except for Horford and Porzingis can switch one through five in any pick and roll. The odds of a team out of the West beating the Celtics squad four times in seven games, I just, I don't see it. Could Boston choke? Could I get proven wrong? Hey, crazier things have happened. But if I had to bet on it, Boston, they're not gonna lose four times in seven games and they're gonna be your champions for the 2024 season. So as always, thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you next time.